here's the purple for the nacelles. The LED tape with the coating on it, the double density, the silicone coating uh, that will allow it to, well, protects it as a weatherproof item, but here it helps to disperse the light. I've added the strips into the nacelles and I've used uh, the cool shot hot glue to secure the strips in so there's no way for them to come loose and I'm going to let them sit here and burn in for a little while the next thing to do is uh, I've got to um, paint and put the uh, end caps on the ends and take care of the final painting on the bassards for the front and then I'll be ready to do the final wiring up through the um, to the ports here where the nacelle struts attach and I will be able to um, go ahead and do the final finishing work on the two nacelles and have them ready. Well here's the dorsal done up and now I've gone ahead and masked it because I'm going to be working on the seams. On both sides I've laid down um, 3M painters tape on here and I'm going to be sanding these and probably filling. I'm really positive and sanding and probably some more filling. Probably two or three times. We'll see. To uh, get this nice and smooth and then I'll go back and do some touch-up painting on it. Um, priming it and painting it to get it all back as one piece where, where that seam is not uh, noticeable. So at least that's the game plan. Hope it works out. In process, um, working on the nacelle, I mean the dorsal, the neck, I went ahead and filled this and primed it, I mean sanded it, and um, worked on it and primed it. This side is really smooth and is ready for a um, coat of paint. This side is going to require a little bit more sanding, a little bit more filling, and another coat of primer. Uh, then I'll be working on putting final coats of paint on the neck. So this is almost completely done. I have gone ahead and painted the first coat onto the outside of the secondary hull. Just put it on there. Um, the secondary hull, like the nacelles, I'm going to, well, like all the parts, hull parts, I'm doing a pre-coat um, before attaching. Uh, the pieces together. What I'm going to do here is I will um, do a wet sand on this after this sets up and cures really good and um, then I'll put another coat on here um, before assembling this section. Um, maybe even three coats to get this exactly the way I want it and then all I'll have to do is work on the seams areas after this is put together that will be far far away from the windows so I won't have to worry about the masking issues on on this part as well. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be test fitting the window sections for this and getting them all ready uh, for their installation and I'm working out the wiring um, because I've already decided well I'm lighting the nacelles and we have to run extra wires um, through the uh, pylons and everything. Uh, as you saw earlier, I've already got the nacelles lighting installed uh, for the nacelle lights. So I need to do that as, as part of this with the, with the pylons and make sure everything's uh, correct in, in terms of proper length and everything. So that'll be coming up. The other thing, I've already done a lot of the detail parts for the nacelles. In relation to their painting and got those done the rings the inner coolers uh, whatever these things are called like the end caps that go on the end of the nacelles are ready for installation uh, I still need to do the half spheres that go on here but all the other all the detail parts have been done uh, including the little rectangle pieces that go on there um, so I'm very close to having the nacelles ready for complete assembly and then I'll be able to um, put the decals on them and spray I think hopefully the nacelles um, with a clear coat 
before I ever attach them to the pylons if all goes well according to plan. I had forgot to mention that I had also went ahead and masked the clear roof section for the um, hangar bay, the shuttle bay, and installed the photo etch parts that go in there. There's actually um, five parts that get attached to the piece. Um, some detail parts on the sides that get painted a a gray color and then there's the roof um, structure that gets attached that you can um, see in this photograph right here that's a real close-up of that that provides a lot of cool really nice detail for the roof section uh, on the shuttle bay well now I'm working on the lighting for the um, shuttle bay I've, went ahead, I've gone ahead and assembled it and did some light blocking with um, with Slick Tulip which is an acrylic based product um, I'm using the Cooltac very low heat um, I'm sorry cool shot very low heat uh, glue gun with cool shot um, low heat uh, glue sticks and I put little dabs on here to um, secure the, um, the LEDs these are all bent at a right angle um, the wiring coming out of there so that they'll fit in um, following these instructions uh, that come with the lighting kit and I have one more that I have to deal with that goes down underneath here I'm going to have to clean this wiring up but this light uh, goes underneath and I'm assuming although they don't give any further details that this is supposed to attach right here with this LED at this point to light the fantail lights so let me put a little bit of hot glue down in there and then I'll set the LED in place hold it for a few seconds and that should lock it in permanently there we go and now they're all in uh, let me have a little pin light here and show what that's looking like on the inside before I turn on these lights so now that that's done, there's another set of lights which is marked on the cable as Q. One thing nice about this light kit is all the cables are marked, indicated where they go, and on the instructions the corresponding letters show you exactly which cable goes where. It's very straightforward. This is the one that is going to provide lighting on the top and this one will has, has two of these two of these LEDs and one flat one these are square um, flush on top I'm not for sure exactly what these are called I think the ones with the little pointed ends um, that look like a lighthouse are called lighthouse LEDs but I'm not for sure what these are called but these will go up in this area and will help light the lights on top and then the um, the square one or rectangular one is going to go forward to a piece that I need to find that goes here on the end so let me see if I can find that and we'll see about putting that in place because uh, I have to put the hangar doors in place with that so that's see what we can find on that and then we can get that part assembled well by working on this part right here part 27 which comes in the regular kit as opaque and in the lighting kit it comes clear and they tell you to carefully trim away areas shown in the gray on the part it's too bad that they didn't mold that part already pre-trimmed that part is incredibly difficult to trim out um, 
and in trying to get it trimmed I cracked the part so I've had to glue it back together again and I'm just not comfortable with that working so I'm going back to the opaque part and I'm going to drill out the window port the light port on the front and file that and sand that down and then I'm going to trim this out um, the opaque plastic is much easier to trim the um, clear plastic is brittle and um, I think this is a mistake on behalf of round two they should have molded if the lighting kit and this part comes in the lighting kit and it's supposed to be trimmed back like that they should have molded the part like that to be trimmed so you didn't have to cut it so there's no chance of it cracking because it is rather fragile and to get it trimmed out it's very easy to to over trim it's very easy to crack it it's incredibly fragile so what I'm going to do as I said I'm going to have already drilled that out I'm going to file that rectangle down to the edges I don't know if this camera is focusing enough for you to see it and then I'm going to trim this out with my Dremel um, and it'll be identical and the only difference is this will have a hole in it obviously that I'll fill with uh, micro crystal clear or uh, canopy glue so this should work as a replacement uh, without any problems so uh, this is just a forewarning if you're doing this lighting kit and you're going to trim that be really really careful I was being as careful as I possibly could uh, working on it really slow but it still cracked on me so I think it's better just to trim this part up and get it ready and just fill this with, with something that dries clear like a window well okay now I've gone ahead and bored out that window and I've trimmed the part piece uh, to accommodate for the light from the LED once this is in place and just in case this uh, piece is needed and will work I've um, masked off the clear part uh, on the piece that cracked and I will also prime and paint it along with the other piece just in case so that I have two options to use so I'm getting ready to close up the primary hull and I need to install the impulse engine component exhaust which is this port right here and behind this port there is a um, piece of clear plastic that goes behind there which is on this sprue right here which goes in place on the inside and the photo etch set that comes with the deluxe accessory kit or you can buy it separately has these two sets of impulse um, grills to go on that port so you get a choice of which one that you would like to put on um, I'm probably going to go for this one this is more reminiscent of the one from the Star Trek the motion picture the refit so that there's I just would like the little ish, uh, little continuation of, of some components so I'm going to go with this and we'll be installing them on these parts so that I can go ahead and put this in here this parts already been pre-painted and it's ready to go for installation so that's one of the next things that's up on the list to do and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you what that looks like in just a few minutes so what I've done I've gone ahead and pre-painted these um, before removing them from the brass etch sheet and I've chosen gunmetal as the color um, for this so I'm back to uh, working with some more photo etch again but I just wanted to show the color of this before I install it in the um, inside the impulse housing so you could see what it looks like painted up and this uh, I painted with acrylic um, Model Masters um, gunmetal 4681 and I think it looks pretty nice and that should contrast and show up quite nicely with the red or whatever color I end up um, placing on the clear part well the grills go on this part right there and the instructions I believe indicate uh, putting them on the inside 
Uh, and you can, the instructions call for um, frosting the plastic, but optionally they say you can use a clear piece of styrene and put behind this and frost that. And I think that's a much better idea because I don't want to actually frost this piece because that will distort seeing the grills. So what, I'm, what I've got is some evergreen clear styrene, um, 0 0.25 millimeter, that I'm going to, like this piece here, I'm going to take this and cut down a piece from this to fit over the back of, of this part. And this is the piece, the clear styrene sheet is the piece that I will frost. That way I can put the grills on and they can be very clear from the front without any distortion from frosting and the clear styrene will provide uh, the diffusion for the lights and for the colors because the lights that come in the kit are white and um, so I'm going to have to paint either paint the LEDs in this sheet or I'll probably do some testing of, of applying it to the sheet first some clear red maybe a little clear orange I don't know and see how that looks first. Well I've moved on back to the saucer lighting and getting ready to deal with mounting the bridge and the lights for that because I've I've almost completed my little bridge. Um, let's get some light down there on it. Let's see here so you can see some of the screens and stuff. Um, Anyway, that's it right there. And I'm getting ready to mount that in here, so I started looking at the lighting rig, which is cable O, and come to find out that I have one LED not working here. And it really needs three to provide light to the bridge properly, otherwise it's lopsided. So, uh, I don't know, I'm going to take this apart and take a look at it and see if the soldering issues are wrong here but I will need if it is bad because looking at it uh, on the inside I think it is looking through the lens it looks like it may be damaged I have some pre-wired three millimeters in warm white um, and let me wire one of these up and we'll compare them now these are the kit LEDs right here in warm white and this is my replacement bulb in warm white. Well, it looks pretty close to me. It looks pretty spot on in terms of the same amount of light. The difference is is that this is uh, the kit lights are are flat on top, actually somewhat concave and this is a rounded over oh, I'm sorry this one here the replacement is a rounded over bulb so I think for this to emit some light a little bit better like these I'm going to have to sand this a little bit and I may sand the other ones too and see how that looks but I'm going, I am going to have to perform some surgery on this so I can get three lights in there working uh, properly so I'll do that and maybe I can get this thing wired up. I really would like to get the um, the lighting and the bridge dome put together so I can get it put onto the so top of the saucer so I can deal with final paint coat on the saucer itself. The bridge dome is pretty much there. A little light dusting of paint but the, uh, the saucer still needs another coat. Well I just got it wired up and um, it was the LED that needed to be totally replaced from the other one. Get this thing loose. And instead of putting shrink wrap on it, I put some tool dip on there. And I'm going to need to sand it so that it puts out just the, almost the same amount of light. It's not. It's a little off at the moment but once I sand that it will make it brighter I mean it's very bright coming out the end but sanding on the sides will help 
um, get it um, get light out the sides. So now I'll be able to go ahead and um, get the bridge put together finally and get that uh, installed up in the saucer. Now normally the impulse engines are lit by white bulbs and that's what's actually here as I was saying. Um, what I've done is I've tried painting them over with some clear red. The one on the left still needs some more clear red on it. I experimented with a 3 millimeter red LED um, but the voltage coming out of off the board is such that this is not very bright and I don't really want to perform major surgery of bypassing the voltage and figuring all that out to try to get this to work. Uh, it's just not bright enough. So in lieu of doing that I painted the bulbs and then, as I said this the one on the left will get a little bit more uh, coating to it. The impulse grills that will I'll be putting on the back will go here I'm not quite overly happy with the look of that yet but that gives you an example of what that will look like so I've had to put more paint also red paint on the impulse grills to get it dark enough uh, with a deep enough red tone and I'm using um, Model Master uh, acrylic clear red for this purpose, um, 4630. So anyway, that's will um, I think is going to work out in relation to the um, the clear red on there of getting that to work. So what happens is this piece will sit down in here and then with the grills on there that'll give the lighting. I think I need to adjust the LED bulb on the right side down a little bit. It's a little high. So I'll have to take that out after the clear red dries and then I'll fix that up. So hopefully I'll get that on here. One thing I have noticed that on the actual studio model there are three little bumps one here where this recess is and one off to the side here and one off to the side over here uh, the photo reference I was using came from the Smithsonian after the repaint of the of the model, the restoration of the model so I don't know if those were added um, why this doesn't have those on there but um, anyway they are little lighter gray dots uh, the three of them compared to the, the color of this so I may go back in and add those three dots on here if I can find a reference photo uh, earlier that shows them on there as well. Well, there it is with the um, more red on the bulbs and the piece is not glued in place. The impulse deck is not glued in place yet, but you can get an idea of what it looks like. And um, fortunately, the camera's not going to step down, I think, enough to. Um, really show it, but let me see if I can get it to uh, potentially step down and focus enough. Well, not really. But there are the grills in place. And, you know, when you back off from it, that's definitely what it looks like. Which uh, looks a lot better in person than when it does on the camera. Overall, I'm happy with that look. Uh, the whole um, whole process worked out pretty good, you know, for the grills. So I'll be able to go ahead and cement that in place and get ready to move on to another item on the list. Now, one of the next things that I need to deal with will be the planetary sensor, which will go on the kit. Uh, down here underneath and um, that has a part that goes well, it's this part right here that goes down here at the bottom and this LED fits into this location 
to light that up. Now what I'm going to do, because uh, it is somewhat pinpointed now, although the camera, there we go, the camera um, shows it more diffused, but to really get it really good and diffused, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and sand this LED um, all the way around so the light is more diffused coming out, and then I'm going to put it in the part right here, and I'm going to hot glue that uh, in place so that it can't move and then I'll go ahead and glue it in um, down here at the bottom so that part will be ready and on the saucer uh, the last things that I need to do on the inside of the saucer is uh, put in the uh, navigation lights uh, on each side that go at these locations so that'll be it and the saucer should be pretty much done other than for putting in the windows uh, but that will come after the last coat of paint and the um, upper, both the upper and lower saucer need their final coat of paint I've gone ahead and uh, sanded them down with some 6000 grit sandpaper to get them nice and smooth and ready for their final coat which will take care of just a little bit of splotchiness that I have left uh, this will be the third coat onto the saucer uh, I did a preliminary coat and then I wet sanded it and then I put a second coat on and then I sanded it um, as I said with with the um, with that sandpaper I also did some paper towel sanding on it uh, to get it nice and smooth and ready for its final coat so that will be that for the top and the bottom of the saucer and I'll be able to go ahead and get the windows in it, get the bridge on it. The bridge I went ahead and, and um, clear coated. It's ready for its windows to be put in and the little bridge module to be installed and the lights hooked up. I forgot I need to do that. But that will be really quick, just a little hot glue and it will get all that in. All that will be in place. and. Um, then I'll be able to put this in. Um, what's so good about this part is it sits down onto the model so well uh, that you don't even really need to glue it on. I mean it just fits in there incredibly snug and is very very tight um, for the fit so that's that's really cool. I don't know if it would be necessary to actually leave it unglued in case I need to get inside you know there's not much not a lot of room in there to do much but you could take it off unbolt the um, take the little screw out of the the board and you could actually move the board over and, and unhook everything if you needed to replace it um, if you wanted to do that so anyway that's where I'm at I want to thank everyone for watching I want to apologize for all the uh, jump cuts on this video it, it skipped around on several different things I've been doing this over several days but I want to thank everyone for watching and hopefully next time we'll get to the point where we can actually start closing up some of the major hull sections thanks again and happy happy modeling everyone <laughs>